last summer fishing the same area oh, this one's got it choked down here we go it's the croaker x shad dead of the summer one of the one of the speckled trout's favorite food is the croaker little small finger sized croakers they, they love these things a lot of people say it's because they eat the trout eggs we're gonna go ahead and put these in the well and get on some more action Fish tattooed. Nice fish. I got one on me. You got one? Yeah. Let's see the camera there. Where are we going at? Right here, baby. He's a little baby. Oh, catching them two at a time. Two at a time. When you're catching them that fast, you want to just get them in the boat about boxing them later. Bring that little one back. Watch what we're doing here, guys. Several pots of train pop, except we're in Lake Bourne. So we call this a Lake Bourne bounce today. Got Captain Chris out in the distance on a charter. There's enough room on these rigs for two to three boats, maybe four. They do get crowded as the summer goes on. We like to get out here in the early part of the summer. See, I'm still wearing a jacket. You still get away with a jacket up you know, until the sun comes up. Right now we're in that early June time frame. You just want to bounce it along the bottom, just like that. Yeah, baby. Like I was saying, I like, came okay, right out, and that's that croaker X shed. Awesome color, fantastic for the summer. And what we're doing, I got just going over, we're going to call it the Lake Bourne Bounce. We're throwing out there into the current, letting it come back to us with the current. So it's a little bit shallower in here than Poncha Train, about eight foot. You don't have to let it get all the way to the bottom. You can get away with a 5 16 jig head here, too. You don't necessarily have to use a 3 8. We're doing the same bouncing method. Obviously, live shrimp use work great too. Chris is over there with a charter using bait. And you just want to either Carolina rig the bait or sliding cord. You want to get it down in that eight foot zone and hop it across. And the whole trick to these wellheads is sometimes they're not necessarily up tight to the rig. These fish are a little close, but you got to be able to throw all around them too because sometimes they're on just the shell pads that can be way off the rig. And you're never going to find those if you don't band cast the rig. Let me throw to the left a little bit. You want to get early starts in the summertime, as you can see. I still have my little jacket on, it's a little bit chilly for a summer morning. Early starts are essential in the summertime because once that water temperature starts cooking and getting up there, they, these fish will shut down. And Lake Boring gets mighty mean. This is a, this is a dangerous lake, especially on an east wind, so you want to be careful. Oh, I missed it. Is that him that came and shook it? 
that's typically when you know you had a fish, we call that pulling your pants down. Let me get one more in that location. In the last episode, we talked about using the shrimp creole, shrimp cocktail. We start transitioning into our summertime lures right now, which is like the croaker X shed, shrimp creole, things that look like you want to match the hatch of what's in the estuary, you know. In the summertime, brown shrimp croakers become a primary source of food, where we also make X sheds for the wintertime, like the cockatoo. This croaker one's a bad dude. Fantastic for the spawning season, which is from May all the way through September. And it does a really good job of mimicking a small croaker. Oh, that fish almost pulled a rod out of my hand. Alright, let's get it. I'll let the cameraman do a little fishing too. We'll be back with you in just a second. So we moved around, we left the little white chair rig down on one of the bigger sets of rigs in Lake Bourne. And that's one of the main things when you're fishing these wellheads. You gotta try them all, don't pass any up. If you're going from point A to point B and you're about to cross one, it's not gonna hurt to give it a few casts. I like to fish these on, a cal on, the, on your calmer days where I can put the trolling motor down and make laps around the rigs. That way you can find where the sweet spot is. A lot of these rigs, I kind of know what side of the rig or which corner they favor. Some of the spots are way off the rigs. As you saw, saw us earlier, we were on those white uh, chair rigs, and we weren't necessarily casting dead on the rig, just kind of throwing it uh, within the vicinity of the rigs. And what happens is they put shell pads down in order to hold the pylons of the rigs in place real good rather than just simply going in the mud. So that's really what's holding the fish there is the hard bottom, the, the shells, more, more so than the actual pylons of the rig. And some, sometimes what happens also is you could have a cluster of a four set of them little white chair rigs and one may get pulled up on a particular year and you can't see the shell pad or the rig anymore, but if you remember where the rig used to be, odds are the pad's still down there, and a lot of times that's the best spot to actually fish. And we're gonna give this a little a few minutes here, this bigger rig, and then we're gonna go on, try some more, maybe some more small chair rigs, just depending on how long Lake Bourne allows us to stay out here today. It's supposed to get a little breezy, as the morning progresses, and I like to get out of here before this lake gets choppy. This is a dangerous one. You want to be careful when you're fishing out here. Another rig we like. This is like a double set right here. We got a little small gas rig right here with a much bigger rig behind us. And as you can see, we're fishing a little small rig because sometimes, like I said before, the smaller the smaller rigs sometimes are better than the bigger rigs. But nevertheless, same crop of fish from it's about rig to rig, and each rig seems to be holding a few. See, there's nothing in the background, absolutely nothing. And what this is is a reef, and they have plenty of these out here. You can just Google reef coordinates and stuff and just start plugging them in your GPS. This is one that Captain Chris showed me. You can see him in the background here. He's out in the middle of Lake Bourne, and uh, what this could have probably was was an old wellhead that got pulled up, and the reef Chris found the reef coordinates, or maybe this is an old rig that he used to fish and had it saved, and now the uh, reef's here, but the, the actual rig isn't. But I 
I'll tell you what, they've been catching a lot of white trout, he's in bait, and we're getting a lot of bites, a few specks, a few small specks. But it just shows you there's just an abundant amount of places to fish out here. Out here in the middle of Lake Bourne. Sometimes you can't always visually see the structure. Sometimes it's just underwater pads. Alright, this spot right here, Chris put us on this little reef. It is full of these white trout. Got a handful of specks, but the whiteies are definitely thick on this reef. This is a great table clear. When they get to 10 inches or better, we go ahead and keep them. There's no no limit at all on whiteies. Doesn't matter the size or however many you want to catch. You can sink the boat with them right now with some little pieces of dead shrimp. Well, a white trout can pull. They like to dig down a little bit deeper. They rarely come up and shake their heads like a speck does. They usually dive and dig a little bit harder. Put up a nice fight for a small fish. really mix it up out here with the whites and the specks out here in Lake Bourne. This is the place where you can put a hundred fish in a boat in the middle of the summer. Again, pretty much this entire little estuary is about eight foot deep, so the same technique flies across the whole lake. Let that lure get down to the bottom, eight foot of water, bounce it on the way in. Little light taps. Under the boat. The whitey hole. Dude, that was insane. I just I just said I thought I'm just tapping it. <laughs> I got one now. It's easier to catch them when you're the cameraman. <laughs> just let the bait drag behind the boat. As we film this to show you guys with these little white trout. Look at that. You gotta hold the camera to catch the specs. But that right there is my point in a nutshell. White trout and the specs living together, gobbling up the matrix. Not the biggest one in the world. He's probably a keeper. I don't know, he's a little short. Let him go. But as you can see, now we're on a single wellhead. We moved from that bigger set. Came to a single wellhead. And that's the other thing out here, guys. Like, just because the rig is small and doesn't look like much above the water, that means nothing. Sometimes the bigger rigs out here aren't any good. Sometimes the smallest rigs are the ones holding the fish. These fish move from wellhead to wellhead quite often, and you just gotta try them all. Um, some are more consistent than others, but they all, they all hold fish. That I can promise you. We like to do this all throughout the summer, May, June, July, August. As you get deeper into the summer, it's a little bit harder to catch them on live bait, but when you're using stuff like these X shads where it's painted just like a croaker, it'll help you out somewhat to keep up with the live bait fishermen. We never use live bait anymore. It's all plastics, makes it more entertaining, more fun, bigger challenge. But that, that May, June time frame, you really don't need it out here. Plastics are very effective doing what we call the rig hop out here. You just need a nice, calm day. I prefer the wind direction out the west a little bit, light west when I'm doing this, as it protects you a little bit better on that western shoreline. If you get a hard east or northeast wind, you can forget it out here. You get all that buildup coming from towards Cat Island, Biloxi Marsh, and it can really get spooky out here.
go. Taking us a, took us a minute to find a little spot on this rig. We went around the whole thing, but not much to talk about. And then boom, back to back. Nice fish. Let me get this right back out there as we're on the south side of it now. Like I said, you can use a 5 16 or 3 8 If it was totally calm out here, I'd drop it down to a 5 16 if It's only about 7 to 9 foot. If you got a choppy, a little chop like we do today, and a, or a harder current, I would suggest a 3 8 But you can really uh, drop it down out here. Now, sometimes that lighter, that slower fall can trigger more strikes. We're using the three eighths and that crow correction has given us a nice little morning. Fish just a little bit longer and then we'll probably kill it and try some reds on the way in and get in before the, the bigger waves start building up. It's getting a little bit breezier. I know by 9, 10 o'clock it's going to be blowing a good 10 to 20 out the southeast and anything over 10 out here and boring out the east, it starts getting pretty bumpy. You can still fish it on an anchor, no problem, but what happens with the trolling motor, it has a tough time staying in the water and biting into the water, and when it starts coming out, then we're pretty much done. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Docs High TV. Catch a nice speckled trout, bouncing the rigs in Lake Bourne, using one of our favorite lures, the Matrix X Shed right here. That'll be in this Matrix bait box. Make sure you subscribe to this bait box. This is one of our favorite products. And get out here and bounce all the wellheads in Lake Bourne. Look for some nice speckled trout like this. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Check out all of our Lake Bourne episodes. We've been doing this for summer after summer. Hope you enjoyed this one, guys. And until next time, good fishing.